Most battery makers are actually doubling down on lithium batteries. CATL is preparing a large amount of sodium batteries, which I think is what people seem to be waiting out for if the comments are anything to go by. Almost 50% of LFP batteries will be replaced fairly soon in the next few years by sodium uh, batteries, CATL said. Uh, they've announced plans to mass produce sodium ion batteries under the new name Naxtra brand. There's a Gen 2 version of it that's just come out. Uh, so starting production in December 2025, uh, so this isn't just an experiment, it's actually real manufacturing, a real manufacturing push, uh, mass production. But what does it actually mean for electric vehicles? Because this is what this channel is about. And how do sodium ion batteries compare to lithium ion phosphate batteries, for example, or NMC batteries? Because there are important differences that people, almost nobody, ever mentions on the internet. So let's kind of break it down a little bit. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Welcome to The Charge Show. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate your time. I don't take that for granted. Feel free to check out the members part on YouTube to see if you want to join as a member on the channel. So let's jump into it. It's the second generation of the Naxtra battery, sodium ion chemistry, now reaching an energy density of 175 watt hours per kilogram, which is up from 160 watt hours per kilogram in its first generation. Uh, this is about the same sort of number, a little bit higher than BYD's LFP blade battery, the, the first generation blade battery in the Atto 3. It's about 150, 155, maybe 160 if you're lucky. The second blade battery as well, the Gen 2, is actually 200, 210, so that's quite a bit more but it's compelling 175 watt hour per kilo is genuinely compelling uh, there are downsides there are also some very good and clear positives so clearly sodium ion batteries don't quite match lithium on raw energy density yet that's not the only thing that matters about batteries though uh, they offer unique strengths they maintain 90% of their capacity at minus 20 degrees celsius and they can even function if they're frozen down to minus 40 which is brilliant uh, they're rated for over 10,000 charge cycles, potentially lasting 20 years or maybe 30 years, but I think that's a bit optimistic, uh, depending on the use case as well. So like houses or car batteries, really, really good. Taxis, buses, things like that. Uh, so this is perfect for those sort of things. And uh, at the minute, Naxtra batteries will target heavy duty vehicles and energy, energy storage, uh, expanding later into EVs and hybrid vehicles. CATL has announced that mass production of Naxtra batteries will begin in December this year. They've confirmed that. So specific production numbers for this year, they've not been disclosed, but I do have some good stuff to say about this. So CATL's founder, Robin, or Robin Zeng, uh, suggested sodium ion batteries might eventually replace up to 50% of the current LFP uh, battery market. So that's a really big deal, really, especially when you talk about the numbers and the money, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, because CATL is currently the world's largest supplier of LFP batteries. And what he's suggesting is almost half of their supply to the world of batteries could become sodium batteries. He's, he's actually saying that, which is a big deal. Nobody seems to have talked about that, but he did genuinely say that. So remember, sodium ion isn't intended to replace lithium entirely. It's more of a sort of bolster for the industry. Uh, CATL's primary business remains lithium-based chemistries, LFP and NMC. Uh, instead, sodium ion batteries are supposed to be a sort of strategic diversification. So, they have a, so they've got a kind of portfolio of chemistries ideal for uh, cheaper or entry-level vehicles, energy storage systems, things like that, and uh, markets that are facing lithium supply constraints. One key difference between sodium ion and LFP batteries is their voltage behavior during use. So for example, Sodium ion batteries have a significantly different voltage range, uh, which means that they don't and won't work well with most current aftermarket home inverters or ones that we can buy from the shop, for example, like a 12 volt inverter. So you can use your kettle when you go camping. They, they will currently struggle, but that can be altered later, obviously. Uh, but we will also feel a really large difference or a, a much larger difference uh, from when the battery is fully charged versus empty due to the significantly large voltage gap so the charging curve is way less than lfp way less and that is definitely a thing that is something to consider when fully charged an lfp battery cell is about 3.65 volts with a nominal voltage of about 3.2 uh, to 3.3 volts 
uh, when it's discharged that goes down to around 2.5 to 2.7 depending on who, the, you know who's running the battery and how you decide to run it this narrow voltage range gives lfp batteries stable and quite consistent power delivery through most of their discharge cycle that's quite appealing it also feels quite nice uh, to drive a car when you've got those sort of uh, characteristics a fully charged sodium ion cell is about three volts or 3.2 volts slightly lower than lfp its nominal operating voltage is about 2.8 to 3 volts and when it's discharged it can drop to as low as 1.5 volts but usually 2 volts so in a typical 400 volt ev battery pack for example uh, the experience differs significantly this is definitely something that nobody really talks about an lfp battery pack starts at around 400 to 410 volts when the car is fully charged even at half charge, it's still got 370 volts to 390 volts, uh, dropping noticeably only at the end, really, when it goes down to 320 to 340, something like that. A sodium ion battery pack starts around 400, but then uh, at around 50% charge, the voltage is already down to 330 or 350, and when it's nearly empty, it's 270 to 300 volts. That causes a noticeable reduction in how the car will feel and the top speed and things like that so simply put sodium ion batteries have a more noticeable drop off in performance as they discharge compared to lfp batteries uh, which are steady and predictable in their output so this isn't the end of the world i don't think because these negative this is a bit of a negative in my opinion they're trumped by the pros quite a bit more i think what would it be like owning an ev powered by sodium ion batteries rather than LFP batteries. So you'd likely notice, notice a few things. Power drop off, I reckon. You'll experience reduced acceleration and responsiveness as the battery discharges and uh, gets below 30%, 40%. Uh, so that's obviously a bit of a negative. But cold weather performance, obviously, way better. If you're in a colder climate, sodium ion batteries offer a more reliable winter range and uh, it would still have 90% of the capacity at minus 20 uh when it's freezing it's been sat outside you've got most of your you know your capacity there which is obviously a big bonus sodium ion batteries should charge at speeds comparable to lfp uh, possibly a bit slower than high-end uh, lithium options but still comparably good uh, lower vehicle costs as well uh, sodium ion is cheaper so batteries could significantly lower the price of an EV, making electric cars accessible to more people. Lower energy density obviously means that slightly shorter driving range compared to uh, similar sized LFP battery packs. Still, I think it's perfect for city driving or short commutes or... So let's talk about the numbers. So industry forecasts suggest that the global sodium ion battery market valued at one and a half billion US dollars uh, last year in 2024 will grow to about 6.25 billion. Uh, by 2032 uh, because I think money is quite a good tool actually to quantify progress or movement in an industry uh, and I think these numbers are quite useful so the global LFP battery market is expected to grow from 19 billion US dollars last year to 124 uh, billion US dollars by 2032 so companies like BYD obviously is CATL they're actively exploring sodium batteries uh, obviously, a lot of people in the comments mention them every day, as far as I can read. Uh, so potentially integrating them into uh, cheaper models like the BYD Seagull or maybe even the Dolphin. That would be a really, really big, big deal, be a good thing. And I reckon that might drop the battery, uh, drop the car price a little bit. Uh, so what's your opinion on sodium ion batteries? Could CATL's prediction that sodium ion batteries might eventually replace half of the current LFP market actually happen? Do you think it would actually happen? Do you, you know, or will sodium iron remain a bit of a niche, like a few percent of the market, or a niche solution for specific applications like home storage, things like that? Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I've been Alexander. This is the Charge Show. Thank you very much for uh, for watching to the end.